Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, parents. Good morning, students. Thank you so much for being here again. We want to welcome you back, parents. We were here on Tuesday and we discussed a few things and left us. We discussed a lot more things. And today we have come to the end of our day. We said on Tuesday that thinking is a requirement. Because, and we say that this is a thinking camp. And we discussed a lot more things, whereas we left. And we discovered that thinking is the only thinking is the work we have to do. God has given us the brain, but the but he didn't give us the thinking. Thinking is our work. So and then we learned it is from thinking that we are able to create new things and produce new things. And when we produce new things, we can sell them for money. So all money in the world comes from thinking. Yeah? So we had a very good time. And um, as the parents went home, uh, we gave them um, an assignment to call a certain number so that they may have their wallets opened so they can receive some computer money, but I don't know how many were able to do that. But in case that you were not able to do that, what can we can follow up in the future? We have uh, we have pre prepared a form for parents to fill the information uh, so that they can receive the unicorn in the future. But today, I want to talk about three things. One is the camp itself and how it went, so we can have a recap, and um, then we talk about how the workshops went, and then how. Um, I won the workshop. Now, in parents, we had a workshop about money. Money is a subject we never talk about in Kenya as if money is not important. Until we don't have money, then we find out money is important. Until, some, until someone gets admitted in the hospital and then money becomes important because the hospital is trying to detain somebody, you know, in a family. So, money is very important. This one message would like to take home, money is a science itself. Because money is like <coughs> physics. Why do we study physics and we don't study money in school? Why do we study chemistry and we don't study the science of money in school? But you are very lucky uh, for the young students that you are in this camp so that you understand money has as much value to study, probably a lot more value than say, physics or as physics as mathematics. But during the camp, we had that mathematics is the language of the universe. Did you hear that? In fact, I want to say that mathematics is the language of God. God requires you to know mathematics. Because if you don't know mathematics, you will not survive on this planet. And it's much, much more important now for this generation. Because all life right now, going forward, is going to rely on your knowledge of mathematics. So you cannot escape it. When you escape mathematics, you escape your life. Yeah? Studying mathematics is not a sacrifice. To study mathematics is to do exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah? So we learn that. And so, why is mathematics the foundational? Language of knowledge is the language of nature, the language of God. Because mathematics, when you add it to anything, becomes a career. We say that if you are an artist, a fine artist, and you add mathematics, you become an architect. Yeah? If you're a fine artist, or maybe a graphic person, and you add mathematics, you become what? A visualization scientist. You see, mathematics is the language of everything, the foundational language. So parents encourage your young ones to study mathematics. It's not difficult. Everything requires study. So, also, must study 24 hours, 7 days a week, 24-7. There should be no time we learn about the distractors, things that distract us from studying. If you do all the distractors like social media, you know, playing with the internet, playing with the drugs, you're not sacrificing those things. Those things are not required of you. You're not required to be on social media. So you're not sacrificing social media. When you stop using social media, a lot of people have V 
very bad misunderstanding of what a sacrifice. Yeah? So, don't do things that you're not supposed to do, that don't add value to you. And every minute you spend on social media is a minute you should spend studying. We also learned that there's a lot of money for education for young people. Like what I got myself, I was educated by the French people. Not because they knew me, or I knew them. They just came here and said, you have to go to France and study. As soon as I was done with, with French people, Americans came and said, you have to go to the United States. I think they are sent. Okay? There's places in higher schools of learning in this world for you. They will come for you. But why? how will they come? Only if you sweep the board. To sweep the board is like take all the marks, take all the scores. They are not going to come for you if, you're, if you have D's, E's, D minus, whatever. They come for you when you have A's in every subject. So, this money for you. Money is not a problem for those who want to study. Money is a problem for those who think that education is a sacrifice. Yeah? Money is a problem if you think education is a sacrifice. That's why I want you to understand money and how money works. We learned from Francisco D'Anconia's speech that money requires that you give your best effort. Did you read that? Money requires that you give your best to other people. Then they can give you money. So, money does not require that you give your shortest work. You're not going to give people your shortest work and you hope to get money. Okay? You're not going to give people a D and then you expect to get money. You will not get money. Money requires excellence of you. Money requires good attitude. And good attitude, as we said, scores how many? 100%. Right? You can go and tell your parents the mathematics of attitude. Money comes to those who want to produce things of value to other people. It will not come to you if you don't produce anything. <clears throat> we have learned that there are three, or the, the three E's of attitude. Three E's that can affect your attitude. Your attitude can be positive or it can be negative. Only negative, only positive attitude is rewarded. So, if, what are the three E's? That includes the environment where you are. Okay? The environment means people around you. Social environment. So social network is an environment that can have a very negative impact on your life because you can develop certain attitudes from integrating with people on the social networks. Your experience can determine your attitude in life and of course your education. So you are in full control. God has given you full control of your triple E's of attitude. You, you can control the environment in which you operate. God will not come to help you. Up, uh, you know, he's not, he's not gonna come and change your environment. It is up to you. You engineer your own environment so you can have a positive attitude. You engineer your experiences. That, you know, there's a place where the work of God stops and you begin. For example, God can make food to grow in the nation, but he will not force you to eat the food. So, attitude is not, is beyond the work of God. What you do with what God has given you is called virtue. So, God cannot give you virtue, he cannot do the work for you. Like God cannot study for you mathematics. He cannot study for you chemistry. But God has given you and your parents' ability to bring you here in school, but he is not going to do the exam for you. He is not going to study for you. So you are in full control of your attitude. No one else. And you are in full control. When you are in full control of your attitude, you are in full control of your money. And I want to repeat again. Money demands of you to give people your excellence. If you don't give people your excellence, then you don't have money. So, these are the things we're talking about. It's a thinking camp. 
And we heard from Mr. Washira about some people with great attitude. People like what Thomas Edison and the like. Thomas Edison um, repeated 9,999 times trying to make a light bulb. And that is the kind of attitude you want to have. Do you think Thomas Edison was spending the time watching uh, videos on YouTube? No, it's not because there was no YouTube. Even if Thomas Edison was working today, he would still have not sat down to watch movies on YouTube and do a lot of other things. So you understand that positive attitudes give us electricity. What if Thomas Edison tried two or three times and then gave up? What would we be doing? We will still be using a candle, candle light. And of course, you know that candle light cannot run a generator. Yeah? Positive attitude produces new things. Positive attitude produces things like this microphone, the speakers, electricity, telephones. All that comes from attitude. Attitude scores more than knowledge. Then, when you have good attitude, you become a knowledgeable person. You enter in the side of knowledge. We learned a lot about computer science yesterday, and you understand that if you have a bad attitude, computer science is going to replace you because we have something called machine learning. If machines can learn better than, than the people, what's going to happen to the people who refuse to learn? They will be nowhere. They will be removed from this planet by the computers. You saw what happened when the ATM came. When the ATM came to the country, there were so many people. There should be so many people working in the banks, issuing money. Now, when the ATM was made, it's called automatic teller machine. Those people who used to do that job were called tellers. Now you have to just go to the wall in the wall on a street, put a card, and money comes out. And so, what happened when Mpesa came? Even ATM disappeared. The people who manufacture ATMs and had knowledge of AT and manufacture ATM went out of business. What about when the mobile phone came? The telephone booth went out, and all those people used to call telephone operators. They used to give these used, used to work for the Kenya Telecommunications Commission, and then all of a sudden they are jobless because there is no telephone booth and all the people who used to maintain them. What I'm saying is that the world is changing so fast for you. And now what's happening is that technology, as you had yesterday, with artificial intelligence, technology is going to do a lot of jobs. And we heard on Monday, Tuesday, that two-thirds of the government is going to be replaced by computer science. What are all those people going to do? Where will your jobs be? It doesn't mean that because those jobs are going to go away, you are not going to have a job. But you will have a job only if you're smarter than those people who program computers. Yana is talking and then he appears on KTN. If you don't if you if you don't know that yet, don't watch the TV until you know how it transmits images, what technology is bringing those signals to your house. Don't if you don't know how things come to your phone, don't fail it. Do not let these guys pick a phone if they cannot tell you how the signal is coming from someone or talking to those people who are texting. How is that signal entering here? Why is it not going to other phones? How does that work? If your son cannot tell you that, tell him you're not good for the phone. Yeah? Tell him that. I want to know, I want to know how this person you are texting your picture is going to him. Yeah, sit down and tell me the process. What is involved? Say, I'm your mother. I already know because I brought you up. But do you know? Yeah, if they ask you. So if, if you know exactly how this moves, then maybe you might merit a phone. If you, but if you don't know anything, you don't need a phone until you know. Knowledge is required of us by God. You know that? We are required to know. And that is why people have built schools 
like this one, so that when people are young are taught how to know. Because it is by knowledge that we solve problems. It's by knowledge we make medicine. Tupo kabisa. Do you think you can learn a scrap cycle by texting messages to friends? Do you think you can do that? No, there is no photosynthesis cycle on WhatsApp. Hakuna, that is what they want to know. So exams are easy. So if you know those things, then when you go to the exam room, you're just laughing. Una jaza yo kitu, eh, lafu na akaliyamu. You are una akaliyamu kwanza, did I miss anything? You look again, did I miss anything? And then when you're happy, you walk out. Now, if these guys are taking two hours to fill the, the test, in one and a half hours, you are done and gone. Yeah? That is how you get people in other countries like Germany, France, United States to give you money. If you want to become a... So you go to Houston, the University of Houston. That's why they do space science. So if you want to be an astronaut, you're not going to do it in Nairobi. And if you fly to a school, better study. Know everything. Is it possible to know everything? Yes. Because it's all written in a textbook. If it's written in your book, why should you not know it? I'm saying, know everything in your textbook. Don't know anything in your phone. Don't know anything on TV. Yeah? People on TV are trying to make money. Some of them already made the money. And they are very rich people. Yeah? Like movie stars. Because they study a lot. To make a movie is not a joke. You have to study a lot. And remember the lines. So, these are people who know everything. Right now, I want to conclude and say that yesterday, some people responded, and Steve, uh, Steve Ibanga from our team is going to come and call up the list of the people who responded. Those people have won 1,000 Yubri coins each for the diligence. It is not that the others who did not respond into work, but they were not willing to talk about it. What's the lesson there? Hmm? The lesson is that once you get your knowledge, you must speak about it. It's just like the Bible. Once you know, you must confess it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you must confess your knowledge. You must give testimony to what you know. You understand that? Knowledge, what did Jesus say about lighting candles, lighting a fire and putting it at a debe? Yeah? Hofuniki, what is it, light? I don't know, candle. Who? A house on a hill, Jesus said, yeah? This is Matthew chapter 5 or 25 in the Beatitudes. A house on the hill is visible to everyone. Okay? You don't, you don't light put on this light and then cover that brings darkness. And why did Jesus say that? Jesus wanted to say that knowledge is to be celebrated. You don't know stuff and keep them to yourself. And you don't have to be right to celebrate your knowledge. Knowledge is to be celebrated. Knowledge is like light because knowledge, knowledge sheds light into the darkness of ignorance. A house on the hill with an, all the lights on, is visible to everyone, and gives glory. What we are talking about knowledge is that when you discover something, go up on top of a mountain and shout so that everyone can see what you have discovered. The testimony that knowledge, like a light, like a candle, should never be covered. So when you know things, you discover them, be the first one to share. I'm not talking about sharing on social media. What I mean is a share with colleagues so you can get perspective, right? So I think uh, these are important lessons for all of us that when you light a candle, usifunike na debe, okay? There is light under the debe, but no one can see anything outside because camp. So for all you young guys, what lesson you want to take from this camp? That knowledge is best shared given out, give out the knowledge, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, and do not be afraid. Sharing knowledge is the highest form of knowledge.
sharing knowledge is the highest form of knowledge and sharing knowledge is what's known as leadership because when you share what you know then other people it becomes clear it's like you're shedding light and then other people know where to go and they can follow if you know stuff like many university many people in the universities they know a lot of things but they're not sharing their knowledge with the people why would we go to china to look for engineers when the engineers in kenya because our people are not sharing their knowledge. A lot more what's happening now in the universities is like a candle that was lit and covered with a debit. So, don't go to universities like that because people want to know what you know and as a result, then you won't have. Now, we're going to stop there. Thank you so much for everything. It was fun having you and fun working with you. And, uh, and right now, Mrs. Mugambi, to come and give us what you see by imagination. We're just thinking, sitting at home and thinking that medicine will come. Let me tell you, you're required to know that to cook ugali, you have to boil the water. Yeah? Simple physics. Why do you have to boil the water to cook ugali? Hmm? Try cooking ugali with cold water. Or even try cooking ugali without water. So, the knowledge is so basic, so fundamental, and then knowledge of mathematics gives you the language. For example, to cook ugali, you have to know that you have to boil the water to how many degrees? 100 degrees. Is that physics? Our mothers do it because they know physics. Our parents are physicists because they studied and they know you have to boil the water up to 100 degrees. And yet you say, uh, I want to cook this for you, ugali. You throw the hunger in there and ugali doesn't get together. What do you mean? Yeah, because it's called knowledge. It's so basic, you cannot ignore it. So we have passed some forms. All we have to do with those forms is that for the parents to fill them, enter the information, so that we may continue educating them about the digital money and all that. So we can establish a dialogue on a continuous conversation so we know what's happening. Please fill those forms so that we may have. We also learned something from the chief, our chief. Parents, our chief came, the chief of this area. By the way, our chief is a PhD candidate at Jammu Kenyatta University. He is learning what? Development. How do you develop these young people? Isn't that cool? It's really nice to see a chief who is taking PhD studies. And he said that the youth are in danger of the people in power. It's known. He's in the government, he knows that. The youth are in danger of politicians. The youth are in danger of people in power. How do we protect our youth from that danger? First of all, the youth can protect themselves. One, giving away all these distractions, studying every page of the book, doing exercise on every page, every chapter, the exercises. If you're doing your exercises on every chapter, why is the politician going to talk to you? The politician will have no, will never have access to you because you are in the textbook. Yeah? <clears throat> of course, the more you study, the more you get. The advantage of you is because you don't know the language. You don't know what to tell them, to, tell, to keep them off. But I can tell you, it's all written. It's in the Bible, the language for you to know how to respond to people who are trying to exploit you. It is in the textbook. Yesterday when you were reading <coughs> the money speech, we learned a lot of language that you can stop a politician cold on his feet who is coming to exploit you. We said money is not for looters and moochers. Isn't that the case? Money is not for looters and moochers. Who are the moochers? Yes, people who come to ask you for money, to ask you for money with tears. What did Francisco D'Anconia say? It is not a notion of tears that is going to create money. So, what creates money is hard work. You see now, what about the looters, the people who are looting our banks, central bank, stealing the money? You need to tell them money is not for looters. You tell them money is made before it is looted. 
Tell them money is made before it is looted. If you want to loot money, leave me alone so I can make money, you can come and loot. So, because if I don't make money, you cannot loot. You want to loot money? I am not in that camp. I'm in the camp of making money. Making money is come, comes from, is a product of thinking. So you produce, and thinking is about studying your book. Thinking is about cracking those exercises in the book, all of them. When you, you crack the exercises, then you're not even afraid of the exam. You know the answers of the questions that they were set. When I was in, a, in high school, A level, and I, I was told you yesterday I was doing four subjects, mathematics, physics, biology, chemistry. And in biology, I knew all the cycles, because biology has cycles. Like you eat food, it goes in, it gets digested and all that. So when they go to the exams, they have four cycles. There's a cycle for sugar, how do you digest sugar? Cycle for protein, like beans, how do you digest beans? How does a cell take the beans and digest it? I knew all of them. Yeah, because that's what I was doing. So, all I did was to look at question one. Tell us how sugar is digested to produce energy. It's called Krebs cycle. Yeah, three carbon cycle. So just wrote it, in five minutes it was done. Then he said, tell us how the sun makes food for the plant. Photosynthesis. Very complex cycle, how that happens. That one done in five minutes. Why? Because the cycle is like saying, tell us how you come from Steph Joy to go to Nairobi. Would you know? Yeah, if you have studied that many times and many times. Because I have studied every step of those processes. And then the people of the exam came back and gave me an A. And then they told me, go to school of medicine. See? That's how it works. And so you study the steps in everything because you can know those things. If you don't spend time watching TV, if you don't spend time on your cell phone, so throw away your cell phone today if you have it. Take a look at what if the guys who discovered the sound systems like this kept quiet and didn't tell anyone because they were afraid that if I told someone that I have a speaker system, I might die. Or what are you going to do? People will, kill, people will criticize you. No. Stand up. Stand up for your knowledge. For those who don't stand up for their knowledge, they are as good as those people who don't know anything. And of course, they do not help the people to advance in knowledge. And that's another thing you want to learn from this camp, that whenever you know something, do not be afraid to say it. You may not be 100% right because there is no one who has ever discovered something and then he had all the knowledge, what we call the higher truth. The reason you tell other people is so that they may help you to improve your knowledge. And when they help to improve their knowledge, then what? Your knowledge and their knowledge adds up to new knowledge and that new knowledge brings up major solutions that help to improve the life of humanity. And guess who is humanity? Humanity is the children of God. So, by broadcasting your knowledge, what are you doing? You're doing the work of God. The same one from Genesis. The job that we were given by God is to do what? To help the children of God. Go multiply, for the multiply. But then, you have one job. Help the children of God. If you still your knowledge, then you're not doing the work of God. You're doing the work of nothing. The work for nothing. That's a third lesson. Stand up and tell the people what you're planning. Because stand up and tell the people, the people who stood up and told the other people what they learned from our workshops. We asked Stevie Bangla to read your name. Please come here, Mr. Steve. Okay, we'll clap for them. First one was Gumo Alice. Gumo Alice. Stand up. Then we had Emanuel Oweru. Then we 
Reverend Victor Kariuki, Simon Jenga, John Rana, Benjel Uche, Nicole Karaja, and Faith Maina. These were the people who managed to get as many coins as possible. So we contract them through their parents and give them the award that is a thousand UP coins each. So each one of them. Is